Offenbach near Frankfurt, Strahlenberger Straße 125A. Anthony Rotter set up his studio and label headquarters here. In the former Logic Records building where labels such as IQ and Hardhouse used to reside. It's right here that Anthony Rotter does his research on the future of electro music. He gives slices of valuable insight into his studio work. Back in 1997, when the new electro movement began, my sound was heavily influenced by Kraftwerk. Still, it's changed quite a bit over the years. That's to say the new data punk stuff is straightforward now, although I'd still call it electro, but still has connections with electronic music and straight beat. In that sense, I'm actually shuffling between those worlds nowadays. And then there are the experimental things I do, like on Stahl and the two fax releases. In this experimental work, there are no restrictions at all. Analog or digital? Sure, this has been a hot topic in the last years. Is analog better or is digital better? After switching to a G5 Macintosh computer, I produced purely digital for a few months and found that it's possible to achieve excellent sound very close to analog aesthetics if you already have the know-how and experience with analog sound. But after reorganizing my studio, I noticed that my analog equipment gave me a bit broader sound scale and more volume. So the best solution for me is a combination of both worlds. Well, on the G5 I work with Logic Audio as a sequencer. That's how I record my vocals as well. My additional equipment is a Korg Monopoly, a Roland JD-800, a JX-8P. Naturally, I also have the classic drum computers, the 808 and 909. I also bought a digital mixing desk some years ago. I just wanted to have that total recall thing. But then, out of the main output of the digital mixer, I proceed to a tube amp called Kult Tube and turn it up to get a warmer sound. Without that tube, the desk itself is very precise with regards to sound, which is more appealing at first if you do an A-B comparison. But if you can't compare the two and just listen to the cult tube signal, it's so much more alive. It's just sexier, in my opinion. I have two ways of monitoring the sound. First, there's the big Genelec system with two subwoofers. Personally, I love to produce at high volume and can get the best mix that way. And then there are two small Roland speakers that simulate standard tape deck and hi-fi systems, so I can check if the frequency and volume proportions are right. The system always got me where I wanted to go. Before I get to the studio, I really don't know what I'm going to do. There are only very few times when I have an actual plan to follow. Basically, I just sit down and let myself be inspired. Most of the time I start out by sitting on the couch, where I watch TV or read or listen to music. In any case, I need time for contemplation. At some point, I just start making music. 
Somehow there's always a great beat or a sequence that ignites the whole process. From that point on, I know pretty well what I want to work towards. Basically, I produce on my own for the most part. From time to time, though, I have production partners. For example, I sometimes work with Sven Veid. I've co-produced two of his albums. Recently, I was in the studio with DJ Hell, too. That sort of thing just happens. We've known each other for years and have always been open to working together when the time is right. It's great to work with a DJ who has such a broad knowledge of and taste in music. I mean, a DJ listens to more than just the music he's spinning. So you've got two creative heads sitting together. A situation in which I also contribute the technical realization. So both sides coordinate their ideas and, in the end, they're realized technically. It's simply not true that some people I work with just give me a call and ask for a track and I produce it, send it and they release it as their track. I'd never do that. That's just not how it is. I don't really understand myself why I work with so many lyrics. Even the first of my albums, Sex with the Machines, that got a bit more attention, had a lot of vocals. That's just my cup of tea. When I get involved in creating vocal music, dealing with themes, which I've done for years, and a good song or track results, the lyrics occur to me quite spontaneously, of their own accord. Most of them are write down very quickly, and then I refine them later. If I were asked about my favorite instrument, I'd have to say the studio as a whole is my favorite. This integrated studio is like a machine energized from within by various power sources. I see myself, the producer, as the ghost in the machine. I started my own labels when I realized that no one wanted to release some of the things that were really important to me. Also, I didn't want to be bothered with this whole A&R management. It's a very demanding process for an artist. You submit it, you wait, you get no answer or a negative answer, or it takes an eternity before it's released. And besides, concepts could get completely thrown out. When I'm producing something, I already have a clear picture of what the whole package will look like. That's why starting the labels was the only logical path for me to follow. 